I hit my all-time low in the 38-year battle with electromagnetic poisoning while living off-grid, and this past week, I was heading to an off-grid home to perform an EMF assessment. Off-grid power is super toxic, and I, I wasn't looking forward to the misery of being in the same kind of toxic environment again. I thought it was going to be bad. Today we're going to hear the terrible truth of what I found, the instant dramatic try before you buy, no cost remediation, only possible in the right kind of off-grid home. Why I believe the terrible levels of inverter generated dirty electricity didn't affect me as it had in the past. The two main types of off-grid setups, the many benefits of off-grid living done right why I might even consider living off-grid once again in the future. Music to my ears, those wonderful words I heard from the husband and wife during our debrief. All of this and more coming up. EMF Remedy is dedicated to helping you understand which electromagnetic threats are present in your home, and whether in the context of your current home, one you're considering for purchase, or building a new home with comprehensive protection designed in, EMF Remedy can help you reduce your family's exposure to harmful, man-made electromagnetic radiation. Hi, this is Keith Cutter with EMFRemedy.com. You're listening to Reversing Electromagnetic poisoning. If you follow the status quo, you will automatically maximize your family's exposure to harmful man-made electromagnetic radiation. I like this case study format. And you know what I realized is that we haven't done a case study in a number of months. I feel like we can learn so much from specific examples. So this is the third case, stu case study that I've published, and I'm hoping to do more in the future. I'm going to give you the summary before we begin, and don't worry. I'll explain it all as we proceed. Here's a summary. Because they had a low power consumption off-grid design with appropriate use of the available natural gas supply and a relatively good ambient EMF profile in the surrounding environment, they were able to sleep the first night after the assessment with, you ready? Ideal levels of all types of EMF exposure, a little higher than ideal. It would be in the slight range for the RF a wonderful kind of try before you buy with regard to planned remediation. And after observing the low EMF levels by night for a week or two, they can decide to go further by filtering the dirty electricity, going wired with telecommunications and computing, creating a sleep sanctuary, with these in place, they can expect to dramatically lower dirty electricity during the day. No dirty electricity at night, no electric fields during the night, possibly ideal levels of magnetic fields day and night, and only slight levels of RF exposure during the day and ideal levels at night. So let's get into it. So after I did this assessment, you know, considering that I lived off-grid for 10 years with my wife and children, I can't believe this is my first episode, my first case study, focused on off-grid living specifically. In all humility, I gained a great deal of knowledge building an off-grid power system, designing a home which consumed, ready for this? We consumed 96% less electric power than our on-grid home. And the off-grid home that we built was just across the valley from the off-grid. So same climate and everything. Actually living off-grid for a decade, wow. I praise God for this experience. 
I also learned all of the many mistakes I made from an EMF perspective. How I created almost 100% of the harmful man-made electromagnetic radiation myself. I learned firsthand how toxic off-grid living can be, much more than you might imagine. That's my experience that I can put into one episode. So a lot of people have the idea that DC-only power systems, I think they do hold some promise, but done wrong, they don't work well. That's one of the things that I learned living off-grid. How far electric fields really influence body voltage and much more. So all of this informs the way that I now counsel my EMF clients interested in doing off-grid right from an EMF perspective. I have never been sicker in my life. <laughs> I hit my all-time low while we were living off-grid. So off-grid living can be both a blessing and a curse. I so much wish that I knew then what I know now I could have made some small adjustments in the way that the house was actually built and we would probably still be there and much richer for it. Anyway, so a blessing because when we lived off grid, I was what I will call rural remote. In other words, we were in a rural area and quite remote, quite low population density per square mile. And the design of the home was a low power consumption design. Now, the reason that's a blessing is because you can have a significant remediation instantly, and we'll get into that in a bit more detail. The curse was because at that time, I was so sensitized to the dirty electricity from inverter-based power and so broke from being out of work for the first time in my entire life. I couldn't afford to fully remediate the home. We had to sell it, in fact, but that's another story for another time. So this last week, what was it like? You know what? It was like coming home in a in a nice way. We so much enjoyed. You know, I work with my wife. Um, the two of us working together, we can get twice as much work done in half the time. And so that's nice for our clients. Plus, hey, I enjoy working with my wife. So anyway, we both so much enjoyed meeting with these wonderful clients in their off-grid home and visiting with their young children, even though the EMF was terrible. I wondered how sensitive I would be to the inverter power because I just could not. I just could not when I was at the peak of my sensitivity, the peak of my suffering. I couldn't tolerate even one minute of inverter-based power. It was just miserable. And I didn't, um, I did not have that experience this time. I think, my opinion, if you are somebody who is sensitive to non-native EMF and you're not gaining resilience, you're not, <laughs> you're not doing it right. I had incredible resilience. I felt great the whole assessment. So that was a bit of um, a surprise for me. I was pleasantly surprised how far I've come in building resilience against non-native EMF, how little effect it had on me, given my previous level of sensitivity. And I think, you know, further validation that the healing threshold for electromagnetic poisoning is ultra low. I think that's achieved by very few and the success is indicated by less sensitivity over time and faster 
recovery from exposure. Those are just um, some personal opinions, not medical advice or any of that, just my personal observations and my personal history. So with all of this for background, case study number three, off-grid home. This was a tri-level, modest-sized, off-grid solar home in a rural remote area in the majestic inland northwest. What were the findings? Well, the magnetic fields were slight, although, as we'll learn shortly, still higher than they needed to be, I believe. The electric fields were extreme. And recall I'm using the same four-category evaluation criteria that I've talked about many times. Slight, extreme, uh, sorry, slight, severe. <laughs> Let me try this one time. Ideal is the first level of exposure, then slight, then severe, and then extreme. So, as I said, the magnetic fields were slight, the electric fields were in the extreme range, the radio frequency radiation was in the extreme range, and dirty electricity, extreme to over limit on the meter. I mean, actually pegged to the meter, so to speak. Now, one of the interesting findings was, and this, this is odd to find in an off-grid home, a, a non-grid connected alternative energy home. And that is that I found national electric code wiring violations. And really impressive and not impressive in a good way, but impressive in a very bad way, amount of net current on the ground, the main ground wire, the main electric panel. That just should not be there in any home. And I was surprised to see it in a non-grid connect alternative energy situation. And I think it it was what was causing more than a 10x magnetic field throughout the home versus the ambient levels in the area. So we talked before, ambient alternating current magnetic fields, which is to say not those generated within the home, but those which exist in the area surrounding the home all the time, are caused by uh, poor design of the electric grid in North America. I say poor design because we allow up to 70%, maybe even more of the current that's consumed to be returned to the point of generation or distribution through the earth. What a dumb idea. <laughs> anyway, it causes uh, ambient alternating current electric, excuse me, um, magnetic fields. So that one's going to require both myself and the a licensed electrician to identify where the net current is coming from, and then the electrician can take the appropriate action to fix that. That still uh, that's in the process of being scheduled. The great news for the clients is. They were creating the vast majority of the harmful man-made electromagnetic radiation in their home. What that means is at the flip of a switch, we achieved dramatic improvements in the EMF profile. The magnetic field went from slight to ideal. Not a lot of people get ideal levels of EMF exposure. And the electric fields went from extreme all the way to ideal. You can really only achieve that in the right kind of an off-grid home where you're not surrounded by overhead wires and whatnot. The radio frequency radiation went from extreme to, gosh, I would have, wish it would have been ideal, except that there was... Um, a mountain nearby and at the top of the mountain, can you guess what there was there? Cell phone towers and other radio frequency generators on top of this mountain. 
So, but we did go from at the extreme, which is the highest range of exposure, to a slight level of RF. You can do this to a lesser extent with on-grid homes, but a rural remote off-grid with low power consumption can give you a better delta, a better difference between the power on and the power off. Generally speaking, there's two types of off-grid homes. Those that guzzle electric power, just like an on-grid home, all the amusements, all the conveniences, and those that just sip the electric power. And they use typically a variety of power sources, more than just electricity. More thought and ingenuity put into the design of the home. Sometimes a bit less convenient, but much more sustainable. This home was low power consumption design. Uh, excellent. And they had something very rare in an off-grid home, which was natural gas. Usually off-grid homes are out in the middle of nowhere, and so you're if you want to use something like gas, it's going to be propane, liquid propane. So natural gas is a real game changer for off-grid living because it's inexpensive and sort of limitless. The typical catch in just shutting off the power entirely for better EMF profile involves things like heating, refrigeration, cooking. Guess what? All these can be done without power in an appropriately designed off-grid home. So the homeowners already had all the right appliances and get this, all of them were natural gas powered, the ones that I just mentioned. So it is a significant bonus to be able to power your, your appliances, the heating, the refrigeration. Yeah, even their refrigerator was a natural gas powered refrigerator and, uh, and their cooking as well. The significant bonus is that they were able to power the generator. Now, generator is not needed every day. It's not needed much in the summer, but in a season where you're not getting all of the solar energy that you want or need, the generator will help you to meet those, those shortfalls. And you have the opportunity to connect a generator that's powered by natural gas. What a huge difference. No storage issues, no gel diesel, no um, expensive propane, no dangerous gasoline uh, fumes. So the other thing is that and this is one of the incredible benefits of off-grid power. This is maybe the number one benefit. It is free. A non-grid connected alternative energy home, an off-grid home, is free of the modern day plague of electrical service smart meters. That's a whole topic on its own. Maybe I need to do an episode on just that. And just to keep it brief, I'm going to... I won't say that the intended purpose of smart meters is to cause electromagnetic harm. I won't say that the whole smart meter agenda is for harm, for the purpose of causing damage to people. But what I will say is that the effect on health, in my opinion, is the same regardless of the stated intent. We'll talk about that more in an upcoming episode, but to be spared of that, 3 million separate doses of radiofrequency radiation that can come from a electric smart meter. A wonderful, wonderful benefit of not being connected to the electric grid. Now, unfortunately, with regard to the dirty electricity, incandescent lighting is not really an option because Incandescent lighting uses too much, in general, too much um, electricity. Maybe in the summer. All right, so what was the music to my ears? I heard the husband and wife were talking, you know, during the debrief. Um, and it was a lot for them to take in because they really didn't know that much about EMF. A friend of theirs who had been a former client of mine, recommended my services to them. 
they were enthusiastic about learning more and finding having their home assessed. And as they're taking all of this in, what is an electric field? What is a magnetic field? Radio frequency, radiation, what's dirty electricity? How, you know, how, what does it come from? How can it be remedial? All of this stuff that we've been talking about for the last 50 episodes, they got sort of in one sitting. And you know, when I go in with my wife to do an assessment, we always planned plenty of time for education. So we're going through through this and I'm giving them the, the rundown on what the problems are with the home and the things that we can do. And the husband turns to the wife and he says, and these are the golden words, oh, hon, these are just behavioral changes. We can do this. And she said, oh, yeah, just behavior. Okay. Now, why, why is that such a wonderful thing? It's such a wonderful thing because people who have that attitude, who are willing to be flexible in their behaviors, can take advantage of incredible opportunities to reduce their individual and their family exposure to non-native EMF. When I heard that, I knew that these guys were going to do a great job of Reducing the family exposure to non-native EMF. Okay, so that's about the uh, music to my ears. Now, if you're designing an off-grid home, we don't have time in this episode, but you can choose between pristine and poisonous, and I'd love to teach you how. You can contact me through the website emfremedy.com. In many ways, living a rural remote lifestyle... (laughs) What can I say? keeps out the riffraff. But you need to consider the RF ramifications. What do I mean by keeping out the riffraff? What I'm talking about is that in the modern age, you might have heard my recent conversation with Shannon Rowan. You might have noticed in that conversation that um, people are the problem (laughs) in this modern age, which is fundamentally against my beliefs, you guys know that I'm a Christian. As a Christian, we believe in something called the body of Christ, where we're each individual members, but we come together for for purpose. The only problem is, in the modern age, when you come together, where two or more are gathered, there's going to be more radiation. People are addicted to their smart devices, and if you're somebody who understands the harm from non-native EMF, it can be a problem. So that's what I mean by keeping out the riff, keeping out the riffraff. If you don't have a lot of people living near you, then you're not affected by their poor choices with regard to non-native EMF. The second half of this, that is that I said, but you need to consider the RF ramifications like the cell phone tower on the top of the mountain, not too distant from their home. I mean, miles away, but you could still see it. And if you have cell phone service, that's not a good thing. <laughs> you know, It means you're living in an artificial EMF environment. And you know what? RF never sleeps coming from a cell phone tower. So the only things that this home did not have going for it it wasn't designed to minimize exposure to non-native EMF. So it it didn't have what I've talked about before as built-in durable EMF countermeasures. If it had things like shielded wiring and a bit uh, different thought going on in the layout of the home, and if it had terrain, we've talked about the importance of terrain Terrain is the only thing that will provide you long-term protection against poor choices made by others with regard to radio frequency radiation. We just talked about cell phone towers as one example of that. So if this home had durable countermeasures built in and terrain to protect from RF, this would have been the perfect, perfect home. All right, so I hope this has been helpful. In summary, these folks were generating the vast majority of non-native EMF in their home. 
From a safety perspective, the wiring errors must be addressed on a priority basis before anything else is done. Because they had this design of a low power consumption off-grid design with appropriate use of available natural gas supply and a relatively good ambient EMF profile in the surrounding environment, they were able to sleep the first night after the assessment with ideal levels of all types of EMF exposure. Eh, slight level exposure with the RF, unfortunately, but still, most people would, would die for that. A wonderful kind of try before you buy with regard to planned remediation. Sometimes people can't relate, you know, especially if they're early in their journey to, well, what is all this EMF remediation stuff? And and gosh, you know, this, this is going to have a cost and that thing over there, you know, I have to hire an electrician, whatever. Because of where they lived and the multiple different uh, types of energy sources that they had in the home, they could do this incredible try before you buy by just shutting off all the power at night, just every bit of it. And their refrigerator would continue to function and they would still uh, continue to have heat and still be able to cook and et cetera, et cetera. So really a neat sort of try before you buy. And then after observing the low EMF levels by night for a week or two, they can decide if they want to go further by filtering the dirty electricity, we didn't talk a lot about that, but filtering really is necessary with off-grid power, in my opinion. Anytime you have an inverter involved, it's going to be, you know, it's not going to be pretty from a dirty electricity perspective. And you can't get as far w by changing out lighting and whatnot as you might hope as because of what I already mentioned about incandescence and drawing too much power. So they also have the opportunity to, to go wired with their telecommunications, and they made the decision right then and there they were going to have a uh, landline brought in, and they can go wired, and they're planning to go wired on the computing and creating a sleep sanctuary with a um, RF uh, shielding solution for that. So with these in place, they can expect dramatically lower dirty electricity during the day, no dirty electricity at night, no electric fields during the night, possibly ideal levels of magnetic fields once we get that wiring error fixed, and slight levels of RF exposure during the day and ideal levels at night. So has this been helpful? Please leave us a written review on Apple Podcast. Consider becoming a financial supporter and above all, would you please pray for our efforts that they would be a blessing to many who need this kind of information? Keith Cutter, emfremedy.com. See you next time.